session, you guys are basically going to be able to learn how to enable your EHR features. That's turning them on inside of Open Dental, preparing the program for EHR. We're going to teach you how to associate your providers with their user accounts. We'll show you how to add in an EHR provider key. We'll go over importing some of the coding systems for EHR. Um, we'll be setting defaults in the EHR settings for the clinical quality measure data. That's your CQMs. Um, we'll show you how to set up patient languages, how to add problems to the master list, how to add medications to the master list, how to add allergies to the master list, how to configure clinical decision support rules, how to enable the electronic prescriptions, determine how the drug-to-drug, -drug, the drug-to-allergy interaction checks will be set up and configured in Open Dental if needed. We'll also set up the OIDs, configure patient reminders, and go over educational resources and linking them to problems, medications, or lab results. So now that we've gone over that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys the database and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do before we begin anything else with EHR is we need to be able to turn EHR features on. The information that I'll be using today is directly related here to our Open Dental website. If you'll come to Open Dental and use the search icon here, you can type in the letters EHR and then the word get. Select this here. And it'd be really really helpful if you guys would like to follow along with what I'm talking about. You'll see we have the links, each of the things I'll be going over with today. Um, you can watch my screen, of course, to see how I'm doing it inside of the database. And then later in the future, if you have questions, please refer to this. This will have your answers. Back to the database here. We're going to go ahead and begin by turning the EHR features on first. So the first thing that we need to do is here from the main menu, we need to click the Setup button. We're going to go down to the Show Features. And we're interested in turning the Medicaid option on the public health option on, and the EHR option on. Open it all will prompt you to restart the program, at which point you'll close the program out, turn it back on, and then your EHR features will be enabled and will be turned on in the program. The next thing we really need to do now that EHR has been turned on is we need to make sure that our providers have a username. We'll do that from setup. We'll head down to security. And what you're doing is you're looking for your doctors. You want to make sure that their username and a provider is associated with the username. And that's how the program will know which doctors are doing EHR. Providers need to be logged on for uh, CPOE orders, electronic prescriptions, and they also need to be logged on in order to run their measure calculation reports which is what you'll be using to attest with. You want to make sure that all of your patients are assigned to their correct primary provider. Um, you want to do this before you start your reporting period. Patients who have treatment performed by an EHR provider are calculated in the measure calculation reports. Finally, we'll associate our provider here with an EHR key. We'll go through list and providers. You'll find the provider that you want to associate the EHR key with. Double click to bring them up. And right here you can see on the screen where we didn't turn the EHR key. Let's give me a second here. The next thing we need to do is we need to get the correct coding system in to the EHR program. From there we'll hit setup and we'll go to our EHR area. And here you can see we have what's known as the code system importer. I'll go ahead and click on that. There are some codes that we recommend. First you'll hit check for updates. Once 
what you'll want to do when you import code systems is you'll want to be make sure that you, at a very minimum, import the Rx norm codes, the SNOMED codes, and the LOINC codes. We prefer that you import them all if possible, but you need these at a very minimum in order to do EHR. Once you've imported those codes, the next thing you'll be doing is we're going to set some defaults for the EHR settings for the clinical quality measure data. In order to do that, We'll go to settings. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, these are the encounters. I apologize for the lay. So here you can see we have recommended codes. These codes will help translate your EHR data into the CQM measures. You can select any one of these that you desire. They all reflect toward CQM data. You also want to make sure that you have your stage settings here. Um, the majority of you will be in stage one, so you won't need to click this box. However, when you do get to EHR stage two, this is where you'll come in and change meaningful use to be used with stage two. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up patient languages in EHR. That will be done through setup here. We'll go down to miscellaneous. And here we have a button that says edit languages. You'll click on that. We have the languages already here. You'll pick your most common languages that your patients will be speaking. You'll just simply select them and hit the add button and it'll place it over here on this list. If you, have, if you don't see a language here on this list, you can, of course, customize your language by typing them in here and then hitting the Add button as well. Now we'll get your languages set up for the demographics part of EHR. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add problems to the master problem list. You want to make sure on the master problem list that there's no duplicates. So to do that, we'll go to Setup. We'll go down to Problems. And here you can add problems. When you add a problem, you want to make sure that you associate it with the SNOMED code. That will not only trigger the measure, that will also help flow the problem to your clinical decision sheets. Um, you'll simply add in the description of the problem, whatever the problem may be. And then you'll search for that problem by clicking on the SNOMED button here and typing in the same problem here and hitting the search button. That will bring up all the SNOMED codes related to that problem. Go ahead and select the one that you feel best suits your needs. That adds the problem to these master lists here. Of course, you'll be able to now add problems to the patient's EHR record. After we add problems to the list, we're going to go ahead and add some medications to the list as well. We want to, again, make sure that there's no duplicates on the list. From here, we would click List and Medications. In much the same way that we added problems, you'll add a generic medication first. Once you do that, they'll be listed here. You'll see they'll be associated with their Rx norm, which will also help the data flow into EHR. The next thing we're going to want to add is allergies to the master list. And in order to do that, we'll hit setup. We'll go down to our EHR. 
and you'll see we'll have a button here for allergies. And you click on that. And again, making sure there's no duplicates. You'll just hit the Add button, and you'll give a description for the allergy. Hit OK, and that will add it to the list, and now you can associate it with the patient if necessary. What we're going to do next for the EHR system is we're going to do some clinical decision support rules. So we'll go back to setup and EHR. And in order to do that, we'll hit the EHR trigger button. We have some interest in here. We'll go over this top one here. What we're doing here is we're, we're creating some conditions that will trigger these type of instructions to populate if the patient meets these type of conditions. What you'll be giving it first is the description so you understand what the trigger is. Next, we give it a cardinality rule. Um, what this means is, is that Currently, this particular rule, only one of these conditions needs to be met in order to trigger these instructions. However, depending on the type of rule you're trying to set up, you can add different cardinalities to the rule in order to get it to populate the way that you want. You can associate the rule with problems. You can associate it with specific codes. You can associate it with medications, allergies. You can restrict it to demographics, lab results. So you can see there's a host of different ways that you can coordinate your decision here, and then of course you can give it instructions, and at the very end you can say where these instructions came from. To give you another example here, heart diseases in el elderly, we're looking for two or more of these type of things associated with the patient to trigger the rule. This is what will pop up if those conditions are met. You'll want to go ahead and create these based on your practice. The next thing we need to do is if you'll be writing prescriptions in your office, you'll need to discuss with your office how many prescriptions you plan on writing in the reporting period. There are exclusions to the rule if you do not write a certain amount of prescriptions. However, in order to enable electronic prescriptions if you need to use it, you'll come here to the chart module and we have a button here that says ERX. By clicking on this button, You'll be launching a, an internet browser web page, which will take you to the site that's going to handle the electronic prescriptions. You'll read through the instructions there, accept the agreements, and that's how you'll be able to do your electronic prescriptions. So just by clicking this button in here, you'll be able to get to the correct area. The next thing you'll need to do is determine how your drug-to-drug -drug and drug-to-allergy action checks will be set up and configured. If you'll be writing more than 100 prescriptions in the reporting period, you'll be required to use electronic prescriptions. You'll need to use the comprehensive version of electronic prescriptions, and this will provide your drug-to-drug -drug and drug-to-allergy interaction checks. However, if you feel you'll be excluding yourself from the prescription measure, then you'll need to set up your drug-to-drug -drug and drug-to-allergy interaction checks inside of Open Dental. So to do that, you're going to go to your prescription setup, which is found in list and prescriptions. And when you add in a new prescription here in the section under alerts, you're, at, you're allowed to add in the problems, the medications, or the allergies that interact with this drug. And then, of course, if you prescribe that drug and the patient has one of those problems, other medications or allergies, the alert will, of course, show up letting you know what you need to do next. Um, you'll need to do this if you are not going to be using electronic prescriptions during your EHR reporting period. So you'll need to discuss with your office how many prescriptions you'll be doing in the reporting period and whether you need to set them up inside of Open Dental or if you'll let the electronic prescriptions handle it. After we've done that, 
the next thing we need to do is we need to set up what's known as our LIDs. That will be done from setup EHR. And you have a button here that says internal OID registry. You'll simply click on that and you'll hit the retrieve OIDs button. Once you do that, it will go ahead and fill these out for you and you'll be able to hit OK and you'll be finished with that part. Next, we're going to set up patient reminders. In order to set up the reminder rules, we're going to need to go to set up again. We'll go down to EHR. And we'll have a button here that says reminder rules. Generally, we recommend that you set up a reminder for those over the age of 65 and those under the age of 5. Let's we'll simply hit the Add button. You'll pick the reminder criterion. And then you'll type in what the reminder message is going to be. And simply hit OK. The final thing we'll do for setting up EHR is educational resources. Again, we'll hit set up. We'll go down to EHR and we'll hit our educational resources button. See here we have two already set up here. For instance, if the patient has the problem of diabetes in their chart, the educational resources that we've decided to give them from our practice here would be this website here. Another problem might be if the patient had tube sensitivity, we're referring them to WebMD. Now the office will need to discuss, the provider in particular will need to discuss what is considered an acceptable educational resource for the problem the patient may have. Once that's been determined, you'll simply hit the Add button. You'll find the problem that you're going to be using. For instance, we could select asthma. And then you'll connect that particular problem to the resource. Um, WebMD is a good example. And there I've added it. So anytime I have a patient with the asthma problem and I click on the educational resource button, I'll be able to provide them the resources that the office considers for that particular problem. At this point, your EHR system inside of Open Dental is set up. You'll be ready to collect EHR information, and you'll be ready to collect your meaningful use data in preparation for your attestation at the end of your reporting period. I believe at this point we will open it up for question and answers. If you guys would like to address, there's a raise your hand feature. If you'd go ahead and press that, we can get you unmuted.